Y tú, mi locura tú, me atas a tu cuerpo, no me dejas ir. Y tú, adherido aquí, entre cada átomo, entre cada célula vives tú. Welcome back, everybody. This is The Clench. Episode number 10, guys. Welcome, welcome to Grace Dental. Welcome to the family. Uh, it's a very, I don't know why number 10 is always like an important one, you know, so. Well, it's like an anniversary. Like an anniversary. A decade, so. no, not a decade. It's, it's like probably like 10, 10 weeks of The Clench, but we've been posting more often, guys. We're happy to um, show you this episode. Right, right. Uh, we forgot to match today, we're usually matching. But uh, I kind of want to talk, uh, uh, switch it up a little bit, you know, and I think this episode, although we don't really have a name for it, I think we want to talk to you guys about what burdens a dentist, you know, and I, and, and I think uh, you caught me off guard there. Well, well, the thing is, I thought we were perfect. No, we're not. But our teeth might be perfect, actually. Actually, <laughs> I need to take, I need to pay a little visit myself. Anyways, guys. You've probably heard it before. We went to dental school, but we didn't go to business school. And when you're the owner of a dental practice, right? You live and you learn, right? I think, wow, you you, you really are touching a sensitive subject there. It took me running. <laughs> started school you know and and you we started um university it was it was very clear to me that i had to learn all of the technical aspects of of you know doing a filling doing a veneer doing a crown a uh, whole mouth rehab to me it was like i i have to see what my teachers do you know and i have i have really good teachers teaching me all throughout university i was always breathing on their neck you know seeing how they move their hands shadowing them yeah but really it was not until years later when i opened my practice that i realized hold on how, how do i run this office <laughs> really like, man wait wait a second like you know i mean for a lot of us that we start dent dentistry or a dental practice, sometimes we go and work with somebody else, uh, which is cool. But then again, you're learning how to be a good dentist. Yeah. You're not going to business school. You're not going to learn how to run a, a practice or a, what do you call it? A business, uh, a, a little run a place that runs that needs people that needs accounting that needs uh supervising it needs a tons a tons of little details that you weren't even aware of because you were over here trying to learn the technique and how many seconds do i have to etch a tooth before i you know right, that kind man. of stuff yeah or, or surgery i bet for you surgery yeah yeah um, i mean how how complex is it right like right it's already enough as a professional to try to be really good at your art, your craft, you know, be, be passionate about it. But then on the other side, if you're the owner, you know, I sometimes I'm jealous of, of doctors that don't own their practices. And I see them, they go, they work for a practice, they pull teeth, they do an arch, they do fillings, they do crowns, they leave. They don't take care of the accounting behind it, of the patients, it, phone calls, like, is this normal? Is this, you know, like, not that we do directly, but we do have that, you know, a, as owners, I guess, of, of our practice, we do have that, what do you call this? The, el embudo? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, filter, basically. Well, funnel. The funnel, funnel. The funnel effect, like, it all just, at the end of the funnel, it's us, you know, it's like, yeah. at the end of, like, every tough decision is like, by the way, guys, like, I have to talk to you about certain topics, patient so-and-so wants to come back for this, it's our responsibility, you know? Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, everything has a price, like they say, right? Like, yeah, yeah sure, we, we, we work hard, we love what we do, but um, try, to try to not take that home with us is very difficult, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, 
just even hire the hiring process or the firing process. Like I, I never thought I had to fire somebody, you know, right. or things you never thought you were going to have to deal. Never thought I was going to have to deal with. I'm dealing with now, which I am enjoying too. You know, like I think it has been a, a an awesome journey. Totally. For, yeah. For me, you know, as a person, yeah. as a, as a boss, as a dentist, as a colleague, as a leader, um, as a leader. Ooh, that and there's another word that I never really had to think about. Um, I, I was just thinking about myself. I was yeah. just thinking about success. Yeah, and making good money from something that I, I like doing, you know, but not not being not having to be careful with what I say, yeah. what I do. Uh, the my actions, you make. Yeah. the decisions I make, but it's it's a it's a very big topic. I bet you know there's other branches of um, maybe doctors don't have to deal with as this as much, you know, because doctors usually work in hospitals. Like physicians, yeah. Um, unless they open up their own hospital. Well, no, they're they're private practice. You know, there's private practice for physicians too. Yeah, or other other careers, you know. But yeah, like if there's not really very many dentists like in your urgent care, you know, or your hospital. Right, right. You know, maybe maxillofacial surgery, but like a dentist, you know. Yeah, and I think, and this is where the subject kind of like maybe I'm sidetracking here, but I wish we could have like a support group for biz, dental business owners because it's it's to me I think it's different. I, listen, here's Than why. a normal business owner? I feel like yeah. all business owners, but... Like a restaurant, for example. You know, yeah. if you're the owner of a restaurant, you have people doing your sushi and someone in the front. And then you have a wait waiters, you know? And it's all cool. But if you're a dentist, you it's like being in the kitchen. Like, you're, you're the restaurant owner, but you're cooking at the same time. You know, the plates are, are made by you. I don't know. There's a lot of, like... It's a heavy burden. It's a heavy plate, but but it's paid well too. You know that's another. There's a clip by. Uh, it's a good sacrifice, I guess. It's a sacrifice. You know, there's. It reminds me of a clip of. Uh, let's find it and play it right now. It's Robert Downey Jr. Uh, and and it's the movie is something else, you know. But the 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 TikTok or the little video says when the gym guy sees you walking into the gym for the second time today and he's like are you okay no are you okay no thank you for asking <laughs> yeah. it will play that you know like yeah i feel like it's it's and, and we're not going to talk about this much but it's like that's not all we do as humans you know like we don't only we're not only passionate about dentistry. Yeah. We also have a family. Who man? But, but we, not even before. Like obviously, God, our family first. But um, what I was saying is, we have the. Here's the important things in my life, you know, and in, in no particular order. There is an order, but it's obviously my family, you know, uh, and then my family just has a is a world of itself, you know. Right. I was, I was actually talking to my wife about it last night, like spirituality, how we're going to raise our kids, you know, the decisions we're going to take to raise our kids. Um, but then, the, and that's a world of itself. Then you have how to be a good professional. Do you agree? Like, how, where, which, where do I go take classes? Where do I travel to this, you know? And then you have how do I run a business, you know? And then, yeah, how do we deal with employees? But here's the thing, man. Like, I don't know. This is where I think it gets, the subject gets like, you could think both ways, you know, you, yes, there's a life and yes, there's that. But what if you want to be like recognized or you want to be passionate about what you're doing? Like very successful, very good at it so that, you know, you're you're like in the history books. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to have to suffer and make sacrifices. And most of the time, family will suffer first, you know? Sure. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from my heart here. I know for a fact that my wife or my kids, you know, miss True. me sometimes. Yeah. And, 
I try to balance it out, but then sometimes I'm like, guys, I'm sorry, you know, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to do this, you know, I have to put in the extra hours because I want this to be splendid. I want this to be good too. I think I'm teaching them something too. I hope, you know, I'm teaching my son that in the near future, you know, he is going to have to be. If you want something to be. Yeah. Good. Like you, Kobe. You have, you have to work Kobe, for it. You, you don't think he spent hours and hours in the court? Yeah. Like he already, he was already like in the NBAs, right? And he was still practicing like. Yeah. He could have stopped. He could have stopped there. Yeah, he could have settled for but, success and already being Kobe, you know? But he kept going. And I, it, it is that Mamba mentality situation. Right. Where, right. And it's maybe extremist, you know, to think like that. You know what I think? I think there's seasons in life like i i've said it before and and maybe if you guys have seen our podcasts before i think i might have said this before but in the road to to the top or to success you know you have to unbalance yourself define success well i guess that's in everybody's everybody perception, perception exactly the road to greatness you know, and greatness is recognized. Don't you think? So it's different. Yeah. If you want it's if it's greatness that you're looking for, or if it's success, because success can be labeled as being balanced. You know, being good with your family, being there all day with your family, and maybe not even. You know, I'm questioning my beliefs as we speak, man. I feel like I I don't. I don't think I want to be great. I want to be successful. Why? Yeah, me too. Yeah, because like, let's say we die tomorrow. I watch this, watch we die in this video it gets played, right? Watch we die tomorrow. Like, who's gonna actually suffer? Is it gonna be the dentists that follow us around the world and They'll probably like, hopefully, make a post and be like, the patient, you know, rest in peace. Our patients are probably gonna struggle to get their work done, you know. Have crowns to deliver. Right. Yeah. But really, who's actually gonna suffer is our closest family, like our sons, our wives, our mom and dad, you know. Right. Like, and so success needs to be measured upon that, you know. So tell me this: you're a Spartan soldier or a Spartan warrior. Or you're a soldier and you have this mentality, then you don't go to war. You don't do what you were meant to do. You stop doing what you're meant to do just because you're afraid that your loved ones are going to miss you. No, no, no. Because now you took it to where you're, uh... you're, you're you, I mean, that's kind of like the same thing, you it's know? It's not though. I don't think so. I think... What I'm saying is, you go to war half a day. <laughs> what? Well, the thing is, we're not really at war, you know? But no, the thing is, the time we're here, and this is, we're doing a podcast, you know, we got stuff going on with cases to deliver. Like, when you're at work, you give it the best you got. And I'm not saying, because, like, you know, we take work home, you know? Yeah. Like we already are kind of unbalanced, but trying to find balance. And what I, where I was going with this before you interrupted me a while ago is like stages, times in your life. So like the other part of the, that coin that you're flipping is what if you don't die tomorrow? What if you die in 40 years and you get to give it five, 10 years of that hustle and the rest 30 to be with your family and to be something important, you know? Those what ifs are so... But the what ifs are, are so essential because... Do you feel like an artist? Do I feel like an artist? Very much so, yeah. Do you enjoy what you do as an art? Like if you don't... Because I know that there's been like days when you have no surgery. Yeah. And you're sitting up here in the office and... How do you feel? Yeah, when you're does. not doing when I'm not in my niche, you know, I I feel out of it. I I I I've, 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 I I cut stuff, you know, and I'm like cut patients' mouths and stuff to place implants. So I said, okay, I, you gotta like explain. <laughs> you gotta explain a little bit more into that. What do you mean you cut stuff? 
like my my patient's mouth you know obviously yeah uh, I have a knife here somewhere all the time where I, where I was going to this guys is i tell when i'm like home or, or messing around i'm like i gotta cut something totally kidding actually but no he's not kidding guys i've no i do say that I, before it, it's a surgical high like i do feel like i'm out of it when well, i in a week that, and i haven't done I surgery have that need too you know it's like it's weird but it's it's like you get i feel like that's what artists feel like when they're not doing what they're supposed to do i guess what they want to do what they love to do it's like you get anxious you, you're like I got, there's something missing in my life, you know? So in the end, I love to have those kind of issues because I do consider myself an artist and I don't consider myself to be good yet. And I am very good. I am very good, but not yet. I feel like I gotta work more. And I think that's how artists always feel, you know, like their last painting even though it's beautiful, it's not their best painting, you know? They want to keep working. Yeah. So those are good issues, good problems to have. Maybe that's going to be the name of this podcast. Good problems to have. The good issues to have, I don't know. Yeah, so running a business is not a problem. <clears throat> it's not a burden. It just is what it is, you know? And it's not easy at times. Sometimes it's really fun. Like right now, We'll take you guys back there. We're actually having a carne asada. They're, they're waiting for us. There's carne asada tacos. It, it's Friday afternoon. The patients are gone. The patients are happy. We're ha making tacos back here. Actually, let's show them, no? Let's show them in a minute. You want to follow us? Yeah, follow us back there. Can we? Can you follow us? You, you, want, thing? you want some carne asada, Abraham? Yeah. So you, we are in Mexico. Our weekends do look like carne asada and banda and music. So play the music and we'll see you guys next time. Yes. To infinity and beyond. Come here. Come here, though. I'm bringing the guitar with us. Follow me. Oh, it smells so good, man. It smells so good. One. El buen rolón. Tú, tú, y de nuevo tú. Ya te la traigo, men. ¿Qué onda? ¿Ya se, ya se acabó esto o va a empezar apenas? Ya va a empezar. ¿Por qué quitaron a Alexa? Ven, la música no se quita. Vamos a comer, ¿no? ¿Qué?